Uh, every morning and every night, I get up and I read the uh, I read the log, and throughout the day, I read the log and I read police reports and and uh, stuff that's going on. So I read uh, that we had a, an encounter with that woman. Um, somebody from the public called and reported her as a, an erratic operator uh, on Caswell Street down in the Great Rock section of Marshfield. Um, it was about five minutes of midnight, and um, on uh, the night before, we actually, you know, encountered her after midnight. Mm -hmm. So uh, the officer found her uh, in a parking lot of a local restaurant. Um, she appeared sober, um, but she was uh, not acting uh, entirely rational. Okay. So uh, out of concern for uh, her well-being, we called for an ambulance to do an evaluation on her. And if I'm going too fast, let me know. Okay. And the ambulance came and, um, you know, uh, asked her a series of questions, and she gave them all the right answers. Uh, but we didn't feel comfortable with her driving her motor vehicle, so we brought her to uh, where she said she was staying, uh, locally here in Marshfield, uh, in the care and the custody of a relative okay. who said he would take responsibility for her. At that time, it was discovered that uh, she had uh, uh, some mental health issues and was having a bad day. Mm -hmm. um, that ended there. Uh, fast forward uh, eight hours later, um, at about you know eight eight forty uh, a.m., I uh, was uh, in the back pocket lot of the police station in my vehicle when I heard uh, across the police radio uh, that there was a erratic operator on uh, Bay Ave. Mm -hmm. uh, headed towards Canal Street. And uh, that's what I heard across the radio. Uh, what was actually reported was a, uh, a named uh, witness, a uh, member of the community, witnessed uh, what he reports as her turning from Beach Street onto Bay Ave, driving at 75 miles an hour in a 30-mile-an-hour zone, um, almost striking him. Okay. And he was... Ex extremely concerned about uh, her dangerous driving. It, 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 dangerous driving of a dark colored uh, vehicle, uh, SUV vehicle, mm -hmm. like, a, like a Jeep. That was then broadcast out to uh, all Marshfield units. A unit on patrol looking for this vehicle observed, it, uh, observed a vehicle fitting that description uh, traveling at an extremely high rate of speed on Caswell Street, excuse me, Caswell turns into Dyke Road, on Dyke Road, mm -hmm. uh, passing two vehicles at the same time, traveling at an extremely high rate of speed. Uh, it was a, a dark green SUV uh, fitting the description. Um, he uh, immediately engaged the uh, blue lights and the siren in an attempt to stop this vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that at that point, the vehicle uh, did not slow down, and it turned right onto Town Pier Way. Well, actually, they renamed that road to the Joseph Drebeck Way. Mm -hmm. uh, that brings you out to the to, to the Town Pier in Brent Rock, where she operated at extreme high speeds down that road through the parking lot until she got to the end, where she had to brake and slow down uh, before turning left onto Central. Ave. Okay. Right. At that point where she had to slow down to take a left, uh, the officer was able to get the license plate. He read it over the uh, radio. Dispatch then came back and told us who that belonged to. And uh, there was a notation made across the radio that this was the same vehicle that we had the encounter with, uh, you know, eight and a half hours earlier. Okay. Okay? Yeah. At that point, we put two and two together that it could be, you know, um, the, 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 uh, the female that we dealt with earlier that was acting irrational that had mental health issues. Um, the vehicle continued to go down Central Street at an extreme high rate of speed, took a left onto Island Street, not Ireland, but Island, I-S-L-A-N-D, Street. Mm -hmm traveling at extreme high rates of speed 
you know, 80, 80 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. Then went through our, um, the business area of Brent Rock known as the Esplanade, which has, you know, restaurants and, you know, people everywhere mm-hmm. um, at uh, 100 miles an hour. Okay. Again, in a 30-mile-an-hour zone. Okay. At 100 miles an hour, she continued to go up Ocean Street along the, uh, along the water while the officer was uh, continuously updating our dispatch and all the Marshfield cars as to what her driving behaviors were, what direction she was traveling in, or what direction the vehicle was traveling in. Mm-hmm. The, the lieutenant in charge of the shift then um, proceeded, as, as did other officers, uh, in that area and other areas in case that vehicle doubled back. Um, also, we're trying to make preparations to get stop sticks available to stop the vehicle before um, something bad happened. Right. Lieutenant Sullivan, Lieutenant Sullivan was able to uh, wait for her, well, wait for the vehicle to come around um, Ocean Street by Plymouth Ave. Uh, he had his blue lights and his siren on. She um, blew past him, and during this whole time, she's passing car- the vehicle's passing cars, and you know, besides he's operating in the wrong lane of traffic. I mean, just driving so recklessly, it's a miracle that nobody could kill mm-hmm. Now the vehicle is traveling um, westbound on Ocean Street, and there's two Macho police units behind it. The lieutenant is the first car, and Officer Mike DeGravio is the second car. Mm-hmm. Um, the lieutenant, as it goes by, the lieutenant says female operator, female operator. So now we have even a, more an indication that it's the same person uh, that we had dealt with um, just hours earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, having received all this information, I just want to stop for a second, okay? Okay. Uh, and just the buck stops with, with me, and I was, um, you know, uh, really uh, sick thinking about um, what could happen if we let her go and what could happen if we continue to pursue her. Right. So uh, I felt that it, was, that it was absolutely clear that based on all the information that we had about who she is, what her history is, and about how she was operating prior to police involvement, that it was absolutely imperative that we stop that vehicle before she kill herself or kill somebody else. Okay. You with me? Yes. Okay. I'm dragging this out. Tell me if you need me to, to take a different pace with this. No, I think you're fine. Um, I had that point where you said, can we stop for a second to right now off the record, correct? No, no, that's on the record. On the record? Okay. Yeah, that's on the record. Okay. I want, I, want, I want you to know that. I want everybody to know that. I want everybody to know that, you know, these things are very serious, and it's a balancing act, and we need to decide... Um, when I meant stop, I meant like I'm stopping, giving you up. I'm, I'm stopping. Right. You know, I understand now. About the pursuit and then telling you what I'm thinking about at this particular time. Okay. Okay? Yes. Got it. All right. So, clearly, uh, based on all the information that we had available to us and all of our observations, she needed to be stopped before she killed herself or killed somebody else. Okay. Because there was a high probability that, that that would have happened had she not been stopped. Mm-hmm. Based on uh, the behaviors that we saw and the history that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, the pursuit continues north, uh, excuse me, the, the pursuit continues west on Ocean Street. The lieutenant is in the car directly behind her and, and uh, Officer DeGravio in the car behind him. At that point, uh, I had a detective with me that uh, 
I had picked up in the parking lot of the, of the police station and uh, had him jump in the passenger seat with me and we proceeded um, toward, uh, toward the direction of the pursuit. Mm -hmm. We um, were constantly getting updates that the vehicle was going by the roadhouse, that it was going by, you know, different landmark locations. So we're getting an update as to exactly where it was. Now, at this time, um, I'm getting close to the Daniel Webster School Zone on, on Ocean Street. Right. There are vehicles that are getting ready to turn in, um, uh, that are stopped, and, and some are turning in while other vehicles are turning out after having dropped their children off. Some cars are still loaded with children. There's children on the sidewalks, there's children walking with uh, adults, um, the school zone signs are flashing 20 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and she's coming this way, operating uh, reckless. Uh, my initial thought was to try to get to her before she got to the, to the school zone, and to uh, reverse my direction and get in front of her, and do what's commonly called as a uh, moving roadblock uh, to prevent her from, from passing me and to continuously slow down until um, she's forced to stop. Okay. I didn't have enough time to do that because once I get to the Danny Webster school, and I had my blue lights and siren on the entire time, mm -hmm. she came, she was, she was operating um, straight as an arrow. Uh, westbound in the eastbound lane, in my lane, straight as an arrow, driving straight at me at, I, I can't, I, you know, I can't even guesstimate, you know, 80, you know, 80, maybe 90 miles an hour, mm -hmm. um, through that 20 mile, coming up on that 20 mile, mile an hour school zone with all those children and the people in the cars and all that going on right there. Um, she came so fast at me, uh, head on in my lane. Um, had I not immediately ripped the wheel to the right and go off the, off the road, she, uh, there would have been um, a horrible uh, incident there mm -hmm. to lots of people. Right. So the pursuit continued through that without her striking anybody or anything. Uh, I, fall, I turned around and followed uh, in behind the other two cars. Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan was radioing dispatch about the stru spike strips, get them out, get them out, get them out. And in front of the police station, um, several officers were able to stop traffic, narrow the roadway with police cars, still leaving an opening for a vehicle to get through, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a roadblock, and deploying stop sticks in the open area. Okay. And she went by the police station, through that open spot, at an extremely high uh, rate of speed. Again, 80, 90 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, somehow she didn't hit um, the spikes that were deployed. Mm -hmm. She didn't strike anything, and she could, and she was driving, and, the, and uh, she was still driving uh, westbound and eastbound lane. Okay. Coming up now to the set of traffic lights where CBS is, where it's the intersection of Webster Street and Ocean Street. Mm -hmm. um, she's passing cars in the wrong lane, driving at extreme high rates of speed, and goes, without hitting her brakes or anything, goes straight through that red light during the morning rush hour commute. It was so busy and congested there. I don't know how um, nobody gets struck. Right. We continued to pursue her in an attempt to stop her. Several of the officers uh, that were in front of the station um, began to travel in our direction. We got up to the second set of lights, now at Ocean Street and Moraine Street. Uh, we got through those lights, and thankfully, Lieutenant Detective Steve Maccarlini had been coming from another end of town the opposite direction. And he pulled 
uh, a police vehicle with lights and siren activated across two lane, two of the eastbound, two of the westbound lanes of Ocean Street, um, roughly in front of the area of the China Walk restaurant. Okay. All right. Um, in doing so, because of how thick the traffic is on 139, especially during rush hour commute, he caused gridlock in the two westbound lanes of traffic. Mm -hmm. The eastbound lanes of traffic were, were uh, all congested and blocked up, bumping to bump up due to the traffic light at Moraine and Ocean. So the suspect vehicle was trapped in, 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 in four lanes of traffic with police all around it. Uh, and nothing moving. There was no way for her to go. At that point, Lieutenant Sullivan ran up to the vehicle with his uh, gun drawn, mm -hmm. uh, opened the vehicle, and demanded that she uh, she get out of the vehicle while um, you know pulling her out and, 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 and laying her on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. and then she was handcuffed. During that entire um, 7.6 mile pursuit, not a single person or, or vehicle was, uh, not a single person was injured, nor was there a single, uh, there was zero property damage. There was no property damage to anything at all. Not a telephone pole, not a stop sign, not a police car, not a, not a civilian's not a property, nothing. Wow. Not even her car. Not even her car. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, I was, I was literally sick to my stomach thinking about, you know, you always plan for the worst case scenario. That way you can never be underprepared. Mm -hmm. And I was just really worried about how bad that this could turn out to be. Right. But I knew that she had to be stopped because her behavior was so erratic. This was the difference between somebody that was, you know, had committed some type of a crime and, and, and was driving reckless to flee from the police. There's a big difference between that and a person that was operating uh, so erratic and so reckless prior to any type of police involvement that, that it, it was basically that she wasn't even based in reality. Right. That that's the reason why she needed to be stopped. It makes sense that it wasn't your involvement that made her that way. No, exactly. Now, if we, if we didn't stop that vehicle and we let her go because of how dangerous she was driving. And she struck a, uh, a child or a vehicle full of children or a person. People would have said, why didn't you stop that vehicle? I can't believe you let her get away and look what happened. Right. The flip, the flip side of the coin is um, you do everything you can to stop that vehicle so that that doesn't happen, and it ends bad with a, with a crash and somebody gets killed. Mm -hmm. Why were you chasing that vehicle? You should have you shouldn't have been chasing that vehicle. You should have just let her go. So these are the decisions that police have to make, and they can't be taken lightly. And uh, they're very difficult, and, um, you know, you have to use your best judgment. And, um, you know, training, training and experience is, you know, your prof profile knowledge. You have, to, you have to rely on your profile knowledge, good judgment, and common sense. Um, and that'll dictate, you know, what actions uh, is permissible for the police to take. And in this case... I saw that we had no choice but to stop that vehicle before she did, she killed herself or someone else. Mm -hmm. Well, all things considered, it seems to have turned out the best it could and that the right decision was made. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. Did I talk too much? No, not at all. I can't even imagine the look on my editor's face. <laughs> I tell him okay. how much.